congregation of Westbrook Community United Church Christ seek to affirm the person that you are with loving hearts and open minds. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we are committed to expanding the ever widening circle of Christ's love. We embrace the diversity of God's own image, which includes people of all ages, races, ethnicities, physical and mental abilities, gender identities, and sexual orientation. We also respect the diversity in our political beliefs, theological backgrounds, socioeconomic and relationship statuses. We welcome all. In the way the world describes you, or you describe yourself, we're welcome here to join, join and participate in experiencing our still speaking God. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Christ, our risen Lord, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at the Westerville Community United Church of Christ. Whether you're a longtime attender or a new visitor, you are welcome here. And thank you for joining us online. You're most welcome here. We pray that the Spirit infects you as it does us here in the sanctuary. The bulletin has been uploaded to uh, our website and to the Facebook and the YouTube stream, so please download it there and access it. There are several announcements uh, in the bulletin, uh, a couple I will raise to your attention today. Bible and Brews is at Barrel and Boar. Say that three times fast. Tomorrow evening, we were coming back together in person, so Bible and Brews will be at the Barrel and Boar restaurant here in Westerville at 7 p.m. Please join us. There are several sign-ups listed in your bulletin, sign-ups for the Fairy Garden, for the Edible Planter, for VBA, which was coming back this summer, and for altar flowers. And speaking of altar flowers, today's altar flowers were provided by our own grounds. Those who came yesterday to help in the spring cleanup day did some harvesting, and uh, these are given in honor and thanks for those who came yesterday to help beautify the grounds here at Westerville Community United Church of Christ. There's also information in your bulletin about a blood drive that's coming up, so please check that out. There's a whole page of announcements with our youth activities, and a special reminder that the youth group will gather tonight at 5.30. Now I'd like to invite up our moderator of Westerville Community Church, Rita Longgardner. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, first, I just want to take a moment to thank the search committee uh, for their diligent work uh, over the past several months. They've spent many, many hours watching sermons and listening to podcasts, reading, writing samples, conducting Zoom interviews, and um, their search ultimately led them to choose Reverend Susan Langner to the congregation as their candidate for the Westerville community. Yes, by all means, applaud for our Associate Pastor of Discipleship and Engagement. The choice was brought to Church Council on April 22nd and Council unanimously approved this motion to present for a congregational vote a call to Reverend Susan Langner to become the new WCUCC Associate Pastor for Discipleship and Engagement. Council also approved a congregational meeting for the purpose of bringing this motion for a congregational vote. That meeting will be held on May 9th um, at the end of the 11.30 service, immediately, uh, at 11.30 immediately after the service. Um, there'll be a candidate weekend, which is scheduled for May 7th through 9th. Uh, there'll be both in-person and virtual events, so if you're not comfortable coming out in person, there will be virtual events um, as well. That's still in the planning. Pastor Susan will preach on that Sunday morning at the 10.30 worship service, and then will be the congregational meeting. Um, prior, uh, Council also agreed uh, upon the voting process that includes electronic and hard copy ballots for the vote. Um, prior to the meeting, voting will take place electronically. It'll be anonymous. You'll get a text or email with a link for voting information, and that will come out Friday, April 30th. Um, voting will close at the end of the congregational meeting uh, on Sunday, May 9th. Um, during the meeting, attendees may still vote electronically, you know, or by a paper ballot if it's, uh, it will be um, uh, presented uh, on request. So we hope that you um, are as excited as we are 
um, to have this call. And all this information was sent out on Friday by email. So, uh, but if you still have any questions, please just call the church office. Um, please join us in person or online in the welcoming, you know, in welcoming uh, Reverend Langner. Um, you know, like I said, there's, there's going to be a lot of different options to do that. Um, and uh, hope that you'll take part in this really important process. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. And allow me to be the first to offer you a heartfelt congratulations on this choice. I pray as you make this decision and have this vote, uh, I pray for your future as you all move forward. Now let us take a few moments to silence all that was, is within us as we prepare our hearts for worship. O oh God, you have promised to be our shepherd, and we vow to be your sheep. You help us through the darkest valley, and we have no fear, for you are always with us. You lead us in right paths, for goodness and mercy follow us all our days. Ask as we have our opening hymn, You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore.
Just these my fish nets and will for working. Lord Jesus, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small seek other seas. You need my hands, my exhaustion, working love for the rest of the weary, a love that's willing to go on loving. Oh, Jesus, you have looked into my smiling, you called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you I will seek other seas. You who have fished other loving friend, you have come to call me. Oh, Jesus, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small O oh God, who sent us the no. we thank you that Jesus brought salvation for all humanity. Help us continue to remain well when times are tough, and we need to call on the power of your Holy Spirit as we forever stand in your midst. Amen. And now let's sing the uh, refrain from thy word, and we'll sing it through twice. I'll play it through once. Good morning. I would now invite any children we have in the congregation up here. We have carpet squares so we can be spaced out. So if any children would like to come forward, see Jackson and Caroline and the Compromands. <laughs> All right. So who can tell me what this Sunday is? Drew. It is Confirmation Sunday. Hi, Olivia. So what, what does Confirmation Sunday mean? Does one of the Confirmands want to tell me what Confirmation Sunday is? Lex. Um, confirmation Sunday is a day where uh, certain Confirmands will be welcomed into the church as a new member. So yeah, it's about confirming what was done for you at your baptism. It's, it's 
Ellie's chance to make her own choice to be part of this community and part of our faith. So it's like when you have the choice between, you know, what you're going to eat for lunch. During confirmation, you're confirming that you're going to be part of Jesus and part of this community. And it's not just about confirming what we believe, it's also confirming being part of the greater church, which is you and me and everyone here, but also everyone all over the world who believes in Jesus and follows Jesus. So today, Ellie is being confirmed. Next year, some of these guys will be confirmed. And maybe eventually, you guys will be confirmed. But ultimately, that's a choice you'll get to make, because that's what confirmation is about. It's about making a choice to be part of this wonderful, big community of people. So if you'll pray with me. Gracious Lord, thank you for bringing us all here today on this wonderful Sunday. Please be with us as we welcome a new member to our community, this wonderful, large community. Please be with us as we go into the world to share this community. We love you. Amen. And you can go back and sit with your families now. Thank you, Amy. That was beautiful. I invite you now into some moments of prayer. 
lifting one another, lifting the concerns of our world before God this morning. There is a prayer list in your bulletin on the very back page. There are names there of folks that we've had in our prayers, and I'll have a few others to add. Continue to pray for Nancy Evans, whose brother has some health concerns. Rebecca Johnson was listed there as she's recovering from foot surgery, but she is now in the hospital with appendicitis. We pray for Rebecca. Jack Kennedy had taken a fall, but he is doing much better. Um, we give thanks for that. Continue to pray for Stu Myers. May Summers has some upcoming surgery, so we hold her in prayer. Found out that Christy Hittipul is also in the hospital in the ICU, and we hold her up in prayer. Pray for Walt Yingling, who is having some escalating health concerns, both for Judy and Dave Marshall. Judy had a fall and had some surgery this past week. Dave is home and recovering, but we pray for them as they continue down that path. We also pray for Risa Schneider. Um, her uncle Jerry died this past week, so we hold that family in prayer. We also pray for Ann Summers, who will be having some shoulder surgery. Those are the names and situations that we know of. I'm sure there are more upon your heart, but I invite you now in this time to join your heart with mine as we offer prayer before God. Let us pray. With boldness, let us come before God with our prayers. Let us come before the one who is the shepherd of our souls, the God of all goodness and mercy. We pray for the church in every place this day. Pray in particular for one who is added to this church family. I ask you to continue to bless Ellie on her spiritual journey. But for the church in every place, gather us together and make us one. One in ministry and mission to the world, so that there will be one flock for the one great shepherd. We pray for the nations of the world. We ask, O oh God, that you would anoint all leaders with your wisdom, so that they will use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. We pray for this community of faith. We pray that we continue to be strengthened through the vows we take today as we welcome Ellie and as we remember all the vows we've made to be a part of your church. Strengthen those who work day by day within our greater community to heal the sick, to welcome the outcast to help sisters and brothers of all faith traditions in need. We pray for friends and loved ones. For all the names we have listed aloud this morning, for those that we lift from the silent places of our hearts in these next moments. Comfort all who are suffering. Walk with them through the dark valleys and restore them body, mind, and soul. Loving God by the power of your spirit, help us to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus. In whose holy name we pray the prayer he taught us by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, and for the first reading, I will be reading Psalm, Psalm 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And join your hearts with mine in our hymn of preparation. The second reading today is Acts 4, 5 through 12. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem. With Annas, the high priest, Cephas, John, and Alexander, and all who were in the high priestly family, when they all had made their prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, But what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick, and if we are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Jerusalem that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we have been, must be saved. Thanks for the word of God given to the people of God. <clears throat> and thank you especially to all the conformants who participate today in honor for Ellie. And I'm so excited for you for your confirmation. I'm asking you, what is your foundation? 
I'm not talking about the makeup in your face and on what you then put, your rouge or anything else. Some people might say, maybe family dinners. Others might say less screen time. All good answers of what could be the foundation for your life. Last week, Reverend Dan preached about a text which just is before the text we are dealing with today. That was in chapter 3 of the books of Acts. Today, we are in chapter 4. A little recap. The book of Acts was written by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke. And now, in the time of Easter, we know and we find out what happens to the church built in Jerusalem. The first two chapters are about how the church is built and what the church does. In the third chapter, or what Reverend Dan talked about last week, and just to recap to get us all on speed, this is what happened. John and Peter go into the temple to pray. And as they're entering, they're seeing a man in the court gate who is lame, who cannot walk and he's begging. So John and Peter approach him. They heal him, and this man is praising God and going to the temple and dancing. And I'm saying dancing, thing of the biggest party I've ever seen. Dancing and then hanging to John and Peter, the disciples who are now the leaders of the church who healed him. And in the meantime, People then are not much different than people now are gathering, and they want to know what's going on, bystanders. And I'm sure if they had cell phones, they would all take pictures, of course, and put it on social media. And Peter saying, what are you staring at us? us? And it was not through us, it was through Jesus who um, gave us the power to heal that person. And imagine, the same scenario would happen right now in that parking lot. Somebody would be healed. Big commotion of people. What would happen? I'm sure Rita Long got now, our fiercest moderator, would go together out with other board leaders and say, what's going on here? Because after all, this is our property. The parking lot is our property, and we want to know what's going on. And maybe we would take pictures put it on social media, come to our church, these are the miracles that are happening right here in our parking lot. The people in our story also want to know what's going on. And let us not forget, it was not the Jews, it was the Romans who killed Jesus. So the leaders of the temple going out and figure out what's going on, and Peter, the disciple, who denied Jesus three times a couple of weeks ago, who was so afraid on Good Friday, just before Jesus was crucified, just before he was killed, to say, I know this guy. Yes, I'm one of his followers. He is now the leader speaking up. Is that hypocrisy? I don't know. we find out in a bit. So, the leaders are coming, and they're arresting John and Peter, throwing him to jail just to see what happens. And now is where today's scripture reading, which Avery read for us so beautifully, thank you so much, is picking up. Next day, court (coughs) is deciding what to do now with John and Peter. What is the first question they asked to the people who healed somebody? By what authority did you do that? By what authority did you do that? And again, it is Peter. Peter, the disciple who denied Jesus three times just a few weeks ago, is speaking up. Hypocrisy? I don't know. I would rather see it as this is God at work. If God can use people like Peter to speak up, and a crowd of people to speak about his faith. How can God use people? People like you and me. This is the kind of God I want to believe in, 
the kind of God I rely on, that God can use people and situation to improve them and to make them better, that God can change darkness into light, that God can change from death to new life. And this is the grace of God I rely on every single day because I know I myself can't do it. So here it is, Peter, in front of all these people, saying, it wasn't me. It was Christ through me. And Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the foundation for my life. And hopefully for yours as well. A cornerstone. I love the image of a cornerstone. In <clears throat> biblical times, till now, Buildings are built out of stone, and I love old stone buildings. And if you just go even out to Israel or to old Greece, you still see those beautiful buildings still standing. Of course, they're built out of stones with huge cornerstones. Cornerstones are big rectangular, huge like boulders. And they not only held up the building to go up, but also to the left and to the right. Jesus Christ is our cornerstone. The church we got married in is 700 years old, still standing, built on a solid cornerstone. The house in Unterbarmen, where I used to live before I came here, was damaged badly through the Second World War, and you still see the dens of the bombs still standing a house built on a solid rock, cornerstone. Jesus Christ as the cornerstone. And I just love that image. And now I like going to the zoo and Riverside Drive and seeing all these old, old houses with out of stone and the beautiful stone fences around. They remind me of fortresses. And just the image of being in one of those fortresses building out of rocks. And I'm reminded of the fairy tale of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Remember, the three little pigs were building houses, the first out of straw, the second one out of sticks, and the third one out of stones. And here comes the big bad wolf, and it huffs and it puffs, and he can't blow the stone house down. The cornerstone. If Christ is our cornerstone, we are built on solid rock. Last week, I was visiting with some of you, and one of you told me, like, I remember a couple of years ago when I went to work, I had a bad supervisor, and as soon as I parked my car and I walked from the parking lot into the building, I had like a mantra going through me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And each and every day, she did. And each and every day, even though it wasn't easy, another day at work. How does it look like if Jesus Christ is our cornerstone? It's all different for all of us because we are all different people with different backgrounds. And I talked to others this week who told me, I have to do something. My faith asked me to do something. On Tuesday afternoon, Micaiah Bryant, I have to do something. I can't just sit here and stand and not do anything. My faith asked me to do something and to be out there to change policies that no other Young teenagers are going to be killed. I have to do something. In two weeks, we are going to have Reverend Susan Langner here giving her candidating weekend and preaching for us. And I know for Susan, Jesus Christ is her cornerstone. And I just hope that together we can build on that cornerstone. Not going up, but also wide to be in the world, to share Christ's love. That we always say we share the ever-widening circle of Christ's love and to be like Christ in the world. 
Ellie, you're going to be confirmed into the Christian faith today. I am so proud of you and I'm so excited because you decided on your, on your own to take the second year of confirmation class in private lessons. Not an easy choice when all your other friends probably did other stuff on a Sunday afternoon. So, thank you. We are going to welcome Ellie into our midst. Symbolically, but also literally speaking later on as part of the service. Ellie, I hope that you can be like Peter. And when Peter, people ask you, but you can say, Jesus Christ is my cornerstone. And a hope for all of us, if we are going to be asked, that we can say, yes, Jesus Christ is going to be our, is our cornerstone. And because of that, we are going to be in the world. We do what Paul and Peter were doing. We're going to heal. We're going to feed. We're going to visit. And we're going to take care of other people. Because church is more than being here on a Sunday morning. Church means to go out, regardless of what day of the week it is, and to be in the world. And I hope that we are going to be strengthened through that stone together. And if people are going to ask us, and yes, there will be people who do not like what we're doing or who our foundation is and criticize us because of who, how we live out our faith. Yes, there will be people. But I hope that we all together can support each other. However your faith, however your conscience, however your cornerstone asks you and feels for you to go out into that world. Because it's different for all of us. But nevertheless, we are all united. We are all here as Westerville Community United Church of Christ because of who our foundation is, whose we are, and how are we asked to be sent out into the world to share the ever-widening circle of Christ's love with the world. Amen. It is now that we enter into a time of giving. We've talked about how confirmation is not just about confirming a belief, but it is about confirming a place in a community. And being part of a community, we need to support that community. So in supporting our community, we have three ways to give. You can text WCUCC to 77977. Again, that's WCUCC to 77977. You can give online, or we are here all week to drop things off, or today there is a plate in the back if you want to drop something off at the end of the service. If you will now stand and join me in our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. You'll pray with me. Gracious Lord. Grant your blessings upon these gifts and upon all gifts that further your kingdom vision. We offer these gifts to you as being part of a great and wide community to support our community here and throughout the world. Please be with us as we go out into the world to further support this community and our global community. We love you, Lord. Amen. God is holding your life. <clears throat> Stop 
your eyes behold the hills from where will help and rescue come the con one who made the earth who blessed the stars the moon and sun God is holy As we remain standing, let us join our voices in our faith as expressed in the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. We will say this together. We believe in you, O God, eternal Spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service to others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. You may be seated. And I'm going to invite Ellie now to come before us. <laughs> if you stand right here, and I'm keeping my six foot distance off you, this is Ellie McKibben, our confirmant. And we are so glad you made the decision. Michael, would you come up as well, please, as we present you to our congregation 
And here is <clears throat> the invitation. I'm so glad, Ali, that you wish to confirm your baptism by being confirmed. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. Ali found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, she has been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm her baptism and to claim in our presence her covenant relationship with Christ and the members of the church. She here is here for the service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Hear the words of Jesus. I am the vine, you are the branches. Anyone who abides in me and I in that person is the one who bears much fruit. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Ellie. I'm going to ask you your vows. And I ask you after each question to say, yes, I do, if this is what you believe and what you promise to do. Here are the vows. Do you believe in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit? And I, I heard her, even though behind her mask. I can, I can confirm that she said, yes, I do. Do you confirm your baptism and promise to follow Christ? to share God's love with others, and to grow in the Christian faith. If that is what you believe, please say, yes, I do. And the last question is, do you promise to be a faithful member of the church, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in the world? Let us pray together. Gracious Lord, who in baptism received these your servants into the church, forgive their sins and promise them eternal life. Increase in them the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Grant love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness towards all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things. Thereby strengthen them for their ministry in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now I'm inviting the family to come forward. Because of the pandemic, the family is actually going to do the laying of the hands and building the inner circle. This is the family in which Ali grew up in. First found all her nurture and all the love. And then surrounding you, Ali, will be us who taught you in your confirmation class in your faith. And then the outer circle will be the confirmation class, your friends who have journeyed with you. And the wider circle are all your friends here, sitting, family and friends who are supporting you. And we vow as well not only to welcome you, but to be with you on your journey of faith. So literally and figuratively speaking, we are widening the ever-widening circle of Christ's love. Ellie McKibben, your confirmation verse is, keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous and strong. Let all you do be done in love. And we confirm you. And may God the Creator continue to work in you. May Jesus Christ give you hope and new life. And may the Holy Spirit strengthen your faith always. Amen. Now let us, the members of Westerville Community United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We promise you our continuous friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Amen. And now is Mel <clears throat> Irwin, our deacon representative, and Mel, who has been with us in all the, on, through the whole confirmation journey. She is going to present a little gift for you, Ellie, and also words of welcome. First of all, Ellie, I love how Pastor Seabird says now, you wrote this down, you got something to say, I said, <laughs> no, no, we wait here. Or I wait. Why don't you go to the microphone, Mel? Otherwise, people can't hear you. <laughs> Gee, I was hoping you would notice that. <laughs> okay, then, let's do it this way. Ellie, first of all, thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to want to be part of us. We have a unique history. We have cornerstone in people who originally founded this church. So we have older folks. We have younger folks. There's a beautiful little boy back there. And now you are bringing us new life. We are very proud that you chose this church and we hope that the things you have learned through Pastor Zigrid and Michael and Reverend Dan and everybody here, that some of your questions will have been answered. But we also hope there will be more that are not. We will walk with you on your journey. If you have any questions, please reach out. We will do our best to answer, to love, support, and to continue with your growth. And there are times when you are going to feel, I'm very alone, and I don't know if there's anybody with me. That's when God's with you. You're never going to be alone. So, on behalf of our church, this is, oh, cards here, okay. This is your Bible verse. We had a wonderful lady who, she can calligraph anything. So she calligraphed. Anyway. She wrote this in court. Thank you. So we hope that will be a, a wonderful memory for you. You're very welcome. And there is a bag back there, right? I don't think it's Halloween candy, is it? No, it's not. It's a rotunate bag now you're an official member and there's also your confirmation certificate in here as well and the flame of, of all are confirmed you already put on to the banner out there and all of your names hopefully next year will be added to that frame as well so this is all for you to take and congratulations Ellie and we're so glad that you chose to be one of us and thank you so much to Miranda Amy and Ben, and to the grandparents as well, for the nurture you gave to Ellie so that she now can say, yes, I want to confirm my faith. Michael has a concluding prayer. If you will join me in prayer. O oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may all be seated. And now let us sing our closing hymn, song, pass it on.
spread his love to everyone you want to pass it on what a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding It's fresh like spring, you want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I have found. You can depend on him, it matters not where you are bound. I'll shout it from the apologize. In my haste to announce the congregational meeting, I forgot one important thing, and that is as our search process has concluded, I wanted to acknowledge Dan and thank him for the service over the past over year. And um, many of us feel he was just what our congregation needed, uh, what the church needed over this past year. He worked tirelessly for uh, WCUCC. He's brought a lot of new ideas and new energy. And Dan will continue to serve us through June. And um, I didn't know if you want to say any words, Dan. There will be an official send-off, I'm sure, but I just thought I'd... Thank you, Rita. It has that. been an honor and a privilege to be with you over this last year plus um, churches in the interim process are in a very difficult and vulnerable spot, and I want to thank you for stepping up to do the honest work of the interim process, to be open to the questions, to let your voices be heard. I couldn't be prouder of all the work we've done together, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and will hold you in my heart for all time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for all, for who you are, for whose you are, and all what you have brought to, the, to us, and for all the many gifts you have shared. So thank you so much. And as Rita said, there will be an official send-off, but at least I wanted to say thank you now on behalf of all of us. And I wanted to remind all of you, you are going to be dismissed from the back, <laughs> and uh, we will... For those of you who would like to, have a little receiving line for Ellie and her parents outside of the doors after everybody is dismissed because we're still living in a pandemic and we still want to be safe for everyone. For those of you who are new at our church, after the spoken benediction, we will actually sing a benediction as well and the words are in the bulletin. And we ask for those who belong to a bubble to say you may reach out your hands, but for those who are not part of the bubble, please just lift up your hands into the air to the invisible neighbor or to the visible neighbor, but please don't touch. Ellie, your confirmation verse is keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous and strong. Let all you do be done in love. And let us not forget who our cornerstone is. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and for all days to be. And as you go into this week, please don't forget and go with God's grace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Congregational benediction.